Hello there, and when you film, do you use multiple camera angles shooting the same scene? If you do, and you use Caden Live, I'm going to show you something that saves a lot of time, at least in my book. I'm going to go through and put some simple footage in there that I use on a recent video, and I'm just going to show you a couple things that I do. First, I'm going to go ahead and drag some of these items into my project bin. And one of the things you're going to see it's going to ask is, it's going to ask me if I want to switch to the resolution that I filmed it in. I'll go ahead and say switch. We'll let it sit here and do its things. I like to wait until all these jobs up here are done. You can see it's clicking away. I actually got all this footage on an external hard drive. Normally when I edit, I put everything on my C drive and work off of it. And then when I'm done, I drag everything over to an external drive just to kind of clean up my hard drive there, my main C drive. So it's going to take a little longer since it's working through the USB connection, but I think it'll still be fine. So first, a little bit of a background on how I go through and film some of my projects here. I do everything on a bench, so I've got a few camera angles going on. And I pipe everything into OBS. OBS Project, you can go to the, uh, to the internet, download that program. It's free, and it will allow you to do screen captures, draw video in. It's the what I'm using right now to record this presentation. And I record everything coming into OBS. The audio comes into my computer and gets mixed into OBS. So I keep it really simple as far as that's concerned. All the cameras that I've got, I do record on their, um, on their memory cards. And uh, my audio is wireless and it's going into the computer. But I also use a shotgun mic on my main camera. So that way if something failed, a battery died or something like that, I can always resort back to that shotgun mic. And uh, it works well. So what I've done here is this was a simple project where I just use my OBS footage. And sometimes I'll drag the front camera in the front footage from the camera but I didn't really worry about it this time other than this on the top right here is the top footage from a little simple camera I've got overhead and this is my action cam right here which I call it action because it's this little Sony action camera so since I let OBS record my main audio and um, pretty much have it recording the majority of the time I'll go ahead and drop those in first so I'll put these files in in order here you can see I zoomed way out I'm going to leave a lot of space around these things just to start out with because it's going to kind of help align this audio. I'm going to go ahead and start with my action camera at first and some of these clips I might not need so I'm going to work backwards. Now it might be kind of hard to tell. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit. If you put your playhead there where you want to zoom in, it keeps that in the middle. And you can kind of eyeball this and get it pretty close. But you're going to see here in a second we don't need to be that close but just get it somewhere about where it needs to be. And that's it, I don't think I need those other two because I don't think they were part of the, I think I, I didn't use that footage. So now here comes the cool trick. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in where we were at. Now I'm going to take my main footage here, my OBS footage, I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna hit set audio reference. If you take a look down here at the bottom, it says processing data analysis. And it's going to take a little bit of time. It's counting up. Once it gets to 100%, it's basically studying the audio signature on that. And then it's going to use that, that when we align, we can align different tracks to that audio. And see, I already went through and did it. So now I'm going to take this footage right here. Like I said, it could be anywhere. If I hit align audio to reference, it's going to look at this signature and it's gonna to try to match it with that one. So it's kind of studying the audio signature. And when it's done, you're gonna see it's gonna align that clip to my V1 track there. That's where the one I, see, I just lined it all up. So if I play this. And 50. Mix it up and I put it on the inside of this. It's about perfect, it's about as good as I'm gonna get it. Use whatever you want. Then after that hardens up, we drill through this. So align the video up using the audio signature. So I can do that on all these files. Since this is the same audio reference, I can take this clip and just align it to that one. And I'll go through and analyze this and it'll line it up perfectly. Because if I don't do this, it's going to be all echoey. And if I'm switching between scenes, it might not be synchronized. And there you go, it aligned it. If I turn the unmuted it so I can hear how it would sound. Clear and drill a hole through it. This is at 35,000. It's pretty meters. accurate. I actually have it chalked up in the welding tip. When I muted it. Body. 
because that drill bit is way too small. You can hear it go right back to where it's supposed to be. So, so it's actually done a really good job of synchronizing it. I'll go ahead and do that to all these clips and then I'll have the video synchronized throughout. All the clips will be synchronized to each other. I'm going to go ahead and put my top uh, shots in there as well. So now that we got all this audio lined up, and at any point during this video here, I've got all these video tracks synchronized to the audio. How beautiful is that? I remember until I realized that you can do this, I had to do it manually and it took forever. So once I figured out that the computer did it for me, I was like, whoa, how long has that been there? But I think it's been there a while. I just figured, heck, if I didn't know it, maybe I should make this video to show other people. And now what I normally do is, and, and sometimes I've got way more than just three camera angles. I might have five. I've had, I've got this thing preset so that it opens up five video tracks and five audio tracks as soon as I start the program because I know I'm going to be having layers of inputs. So right click and remove space and tracks. That moves everything to the beginning. And you can do that. It moves everything together as a unit. So you're not um, moving just one track or the other. If you right clicked and just removed uh, remove space, then it would just remove whatever space and whatever video track you're in. But if you remove space in all tracks, it just shifts everything over until it bumps up against the first thing and it stops. I'm going to go to the very beginning and I zoom in. I'm like, okay, this is where I'm going to want to start this thing. Right about there. You can see the audio track starts up. The more I zoom in, you can see the closer I get to it. And I screw up a lot when I record my videos. So I end up having to say the same thing over about 400 times until I don't screw up. Well, in the very beginning of this video, I didn't screw up, so I know I'm probably pretty good. So I'm just going to go, and using Shift-R cuts your, your clip. You could right-click and hit Cut Clip, but if you've got like five videos stacked on each other and you're right-clicking on all of them, it takes forever. Whereas if you just highlight it or, or put your playhead wherever you want it, and you highlight it and hit Shift R, Shift R, and you kind of go down the line. It goes pretty quick. Click, 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 click. It feels uh, almost like you're playing a video game or something like that. Also, one thing that you might notice, if you're using these multiple clips, these things stack on top of each other, and you're always seeing what's on top. They're like sheets of paper, right? So at the bottom, you've got a piece of paper, and if you put a piece of paper over the top of that, now you can't see the one underneath it. So when I aligned all these and stacked them all up, I've got my main footage here on V1, and then I have all these other angles on top of that. Well, I'm going to zoom back out so that way we can see everything. Because what you can do is hit the shift button and click and drag and highlight. Well, in this case, I'm highlighting the top two um, camera angles and right click and hit disable clip. And that disables all those clips, even the audio. It's not the same as this. When I hit this little button right there that puts an X through the video clip, that just kind of turns it off. And it's off for good. So when I disable it, it's still there. I haven't killed it. I just pretty much muted it or took it away from view. And now I can enable it and disable it as I need. And that's pretty much how you go through and bounce between these different camera scenes. So like I'm going to come here to the middle. Now obviously this uh, this is I've already edited this video, so I'm just kind of messing around right now. I went through and did my little clip thing. Let me zoom in so I can see where I did that at. See, I'm gonna. Maybe do it right here. I'll do it right there. So you can see this scene right here that's a little bit brighter than the others. That is my front view. This is also where our, once, once this epoxy. Yeah, I'm screwing it all up left, left and right even on this one. <laughs> Sometimes it's humorous watching how many times I screw up. But if I decide I want to switch between a scene, like maybe I want this top view, I can... Shift R or cut the clip, enable it. Once we, and now you got the top view. Sets up, we're gonna drill a hole through it. And that's where this welding. Okay, maybe I want my action cam view, so I'm gonna disable this clip. I'm gonna Shift R, and enable that clip. Tips when you're coming to this point. You can actually just use not really showing much. My hands are up too high. I can Shift R, disable that, and goes back to my front view. Perfect shot. It doesn't hold it. So you can go through and do that as you watch it. And that's typically how I do the, the workflow on these videos is I will align all these audio clips up. 
that'll get rid of all the crap, you know, stuff that basically doesn't belong, my screw ups. I just watch, I disable the top two, all the clips except for my, my main clip, and I watch the whole thing, and I cut out all the, the screw ups, the fumbled words, the sentences that I had to say over, and then all the dead air, like if I had to get up and leave and get a tool or something like that, I cut all that stuff out. So basically what I've got from front to back, I'm seeing the main footage here from the front view, but it's all the stuff I want to keep. And then I go back and I watch it again and I jump around and clip and enable and disable clips as I need. And that's what's uh, kind of neat about this is um, you can have as many of these clips stacked on top of each other, as many camera angle views as you want. And then even within, if I found something that I'm like, let me zoom in on this. Let's say I wanted this over here as kind of a small kind of an add in. I can move whatever I clipped out and put it around somewhere else. And I've done that, like I've recorded stuff and then I took just still pictures kind of of me holding apart, not still pictures, but you know, close ups of me moving apart. And then I'll keep those in there, but I'll move them and drag them on top of what I wanna see. And uh, that's just a neat little feature. There's fun stuff that you can do with this program. It's, it's super impressive and super powerful. When you cut and splice and all that stuff, you can ind independently uh, uh, apply effects to these. So for example, if I wanted to zoom in on this, I can right click. Now, this is a little trick, a little something that you might not have known, that when you see insert effect, there's usually not much listed here. You have to add whatever the effect is to your favorites list. So let's say, for example, I'm just gonna say distort. I want that to be a favorite. Because if you notice, if I right click on this, I don't see distort listed there. But let's see if I want distort um, to be listed there. I can add it to favorites. And it's gonna show up when I click this little star right there. There you are, distort, it's an alphabetical order. And if I right click on it, insert effect, there it is, distort. So anything you add to your favorites will be right here when you right click on the little clip that you want to do an adjustment to and you know it'll just basically be there it'll um, I don't even know what this effect does ooh that's pretty cool wow yeah you can do keyframes on that too that's neat I might have to play around with this huh Never done any of the distort stuff. We're gonna drill a hole through it, and that's where this welding tip is. Whoa. Um, you can actually just use the actual chuck that they give you. That'd blow my mind if I saw that. But anyway, so yeah, I just wanted to point that out that um, when you're good, you can apply an effect to just the little clip that you've got, because after that, if I enable this one, you'll see it didn't affect the rest of it. So if I cut it, Shift R or cut clip by right clicking on it. I apply an effect, it's only gonna apply it to the one to the separate little clip that I've cut there, which is nice. Because that's good. If you want to zoom in on something but not zoom in on the whole clip, that's the way to do it. Now if you zoom in on, on the clip while it's in the project bin, it's gonna apply it to any anything and everything. So if you want an overall it always to be zoomed or uh, you know rotated or something like that, you can do it while it's in the project bin. But if you want to leave that for specific cuts and scenes you want to do that when it's on the timeline. Anyway, that's a long little tutorial, if you will, on this Caden Live on how you can use multiple camera angles and quickly and easily synchronize the audio to get these clips to line up perfectly so you don't have to manually drag that. And then how you can go through and disable all the clips except for the main view that you want. So that way you can do your quick and rough editing, kind of get all the scenes that you don't want out. And, um, and then you can go through and individually clip and cut and clip and cut and bounce between your three different scenes or four or how many other scenes you've got uh, and go back and forth by enabling and disabling. Hopefully this all makes sense and hopefully this is helpful. I just wanted to share this with the world because it's such a great program and I've learned a lot and I use a lot and um, trying to help. Thanks for watching.